Hello and welcome to Talbot Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Today we're in front of the art building at Carson Newman University. This building houses a number of classrooms and wonderful studios where students can learn and have space to create. Our daughter Jessica has taken many studio classes here and as she looks toward graduation, she's compiling a collection of her work called a portfolio. It reflects her skills and abilities, her style. Each student, though they are taught by the same professors, has their own individual style and ultimately their own unique impression or impact as they create. Andy Warhol was one such artist. He was a famous, influential, and somewhat controversial artist who used a variety of mediums, printmaking, painting, cinema, and photography. Many of his creations are highly valuable and very collectible. His works are some of the most expensive ever sold. The highest price ever paid for a Warhol painting is $10 million for a 1965 canvas entitled Silver Car Crash. Andy Warhol has famously said, everyone's going to get his or her 15 minutes of fame. Then what? Today, we look at the then what of Moses' life. That point in time where he climbs Mount Nebo, where he will meet his maker, and all that was left of him was his legacy. I don't mind if you've got something nice to say about me. I enjoy accolade like the rest. You could take my picture and hang it in a gallery with all the win who's and so and so's that used to be the best at such and such. It wouldn't matter much. of this world I want to leave a legacy How will they remember me Did I choose to love Did I point to you enough to make a mark on things I want to leave an offering Child of mercy and grace who blessed your Today is All Saints Day, a day when we reflect on the lives of many godly people who have gone before us, who have paved the way for us. We live in their legacy. After they left, we're left with the question, then what? We work with the strengths and the challenges that they left us in their legacy. And in turn today, we consider the legacy that we're leaving for others. What will people remember about us 
What impact did we make? Have you ever attended a high school reunion where you go back and you catch up on the stories of the peers that you grew up with? <laughs> You're curious about what they did with their lives and you wonder, how did this story end up? What have they done? This is my school, Jackson High School in Massillon, Ohio. Some of the people who I graduated with, I had known since I was only five years old. I've often wondered, what has become of many of them? It used to be that you could only find out the answer to that question if you went to the, your class reunion. It used to be that high school reunions were the one time where you could find out after all those years who your best friend from fifth grade was and how they're doing. Or how about your basketball teammates? Or the people you sing in choir with? All those people, all those stories. You know, as I compiled these pictures, it really did make me wonder, what did happen to these folks? It was all I could do to not hop on the internet and check it out. Sometimes I have done this and I found out the answers. With the advent of the internet, you can find all kinds of things out and fill in the stories, the subsequent chapters of each person's story. It's interesting to know what people have done with their lives, what their story is. Do you ever have a random thought where you wonder what happened to some star like Richard Thomas from the Waltons or Drew Barrymore from E.T.? Well, now you can just hop on the internet to find out. Here are some fun examples. MC Hammer, whose hip hop anthem, You Can't Touch This, was a sensation in the early 90s and whose wealth was estimated at around 30 million, is now a gospel minister after losing much of his fortune when his career ended up going downhill. Melissa Gilbert from Little House in the Prairie became a television director, a producer, a politician, and then the president of the Screen Actors Guild. Remember Mikey, the kid from the Life Serial commercials in the 1970s? He was last seen as an advertising executive in New York City. Amy Grant, the queen of Christian pop, received her first recording contract just five weeks before her 16th birthday in 1975. She continues to sing and produce albums, still touring and singing across the country. It's a lot of fun to find out whatever happened to some of these famous or sometimes infamous people. Some famous folks, like their everyday counterparts, just seem to disappear off the map. Amelia Earhart, for example, is one of those folks whom Americans have been wondering about for decades. Ever since her small plane disappeared from the South Pacific in the 1930s, every so often someone claims to have found the wreckage. We still don't know about Teamster leader Jimmy Hoffa, or where he is, though it's suspected that the Mafia has something to do with his disappearance. Or whatever happened to D.B. Cooper after he parachuted out of an airliner with $200,000 in 1971. His case remains the only unsolved case of aircraft piracy in aviation history. Some people disappear without a trace. When we consider Moses' story, we're left with two questions. What happened to Moses at his death? And what was his legacy? Let's start with the events of his death. What are the events that we know? What do they tell us? How were they recorded? And what questions remain about his whereabouts? There is an interesting contrast between Moses' birth story and the story of his death. Moses had a very dramatic birthing story. Shifra and Puah safeguarded him at his birth. His mother, Jochebed, then protected him by doing the very same thing as the Egyptians planned to do, by throwing him in the river. But she had it with a sparkle in her eye when she put him in a basket. His sister Miriam watched over him, and then Pharaoh's daughter rescued him and incorporated him into her home. A lot of people were involved. But his death story is quite the opposite. The events are as different as the environment, as opposite as the mouth of the river is from a mountain where you can go and see for miles. 
Scripture records, Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. He goes up on Mount Nebo unaccompanied. He dies alone, and he's buried by God. So whatever happened to Moses? It's a bit of a mystery. You might say Moses is the Amelia Earhart of the Bible. He flies solo up Mount Nebo and disappears completely off the radar. No one hears from him again. Fascinating. At Moses' birth, he was surrounded by people. When he dies, he's totally alone. In fact, nobody knows where he was buried. But before he died, the scriptures record, And the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and the land of Judah, extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley, with Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. God gives him the fulfillment to know that what he set out to do, he accomplished. He led the people of Israel out of Egypt on a meandering path through the desert where they learned to depend on God, and then he brought them right to the cusp of the promised land. The scriptures say, I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. In actuality, one couldn't literally see all those places from from Mount Nebo. So perhaps God gave him a vision. God offered him assurance that what was promised to Abraham and then to Isaac and to Jacob would come true. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab. But to this day, no one knows the exact place. Those are the events of his death. He climbed the mountain alone. God showed him the lands that the Israelites would inherit. He died and then God buried him. Of course, the questions abound. How did he die exactly? Other than the fact that it was at the Lord's command. Where is Beth Peor? Who buried him? And was he really buried? Or is there something missing from this story? Has anybody been searching for his grave? How would you know if you found it? How did he die? We don't know the details, but it is curious, isn't it? Oftentimes, we like to hear the details about how a person died. In a sense, we hope that it will tell us something about their lives. We hear stories that sometimes people When they're dying, they'll point to a corner and say, Jesus, or they'll see a light, or maybe a body of water that they're trying to figure out how they'll navigate it. Or they begin talking to relatives who have passed away a long time ago. These final moments are important. We want to know how they met their maker. In some sense, these details tell us the final chapter of that person's life. And somehow they help us gain closure as we think about their life. How tragic it is that in this time of the pandemic that so many people are denied the opportunity to accompany their loved ones through this final step, who miss the chance to share those final moments with their loved ones, who are unable to convey the story to others. These last pages are blank. And yet in Moses' case, we do have a recording of the final events of his life. But this poses another interesting question. Who wrote this? Who wrote it down? It's an interesting question, isn't it? If Moses went up to Mount Nebo alone, who was there to record those events, to tell the people what happened to him in these final moments? Maybe he wrote his own obituary before he left. Or maybe he encountered Joshua along the way, just before his passing, who then wrote the sequence of events. The Bible is a story of faith. It conveys truth to us, and the truth of this story is that God cared for Moses. It's a beautiful picture of God's relationships with people. The same God that scooped up the clay in the creation story scooped up a burial place for Moses. He was buried on the mountain. Unlike his predecessors, Jacob and Joseph, his bones were not gathered or carried anywhere. He was buried by God. 
and the people were left with his legacy. Which leads us to the next question. What was Moses' legacy? What were the defining moments of his life? What did people say about him? And how did his life shape the lives of the Hebrew people? And how does it teach our lives? Moses had a number of defining moments in his life. Any one of these life events are noteworthy. <laughs> Listen to this abbreviated list. We already talked about his birth narrative, where a group of courageous people guarded and protected his life. And then, as a young man, aware of his ancestry, he defends one of his people by striking an Egyptian dead. He went from the favored one to the wanted one. Remember then he fled to the region of Moab, a stranger, a nobody, and he discovered hospitality in the home of Jethro, the high priest of Midian. There he married Zephora and had two sons. He shepherded sheep. He learned patience and trust. He encountered a burning bush that burned but didn't burn up. He heard a voice from God calling him to rescue his people. So he returned to Egypt and announced his declaration, whereupon Pharaoh rejected his request, and Egypt was visited with 10 plagues. You remember these 10 plagues from Sunday school. The people miraculously escaped through the Red Sea that parted for their safe passage. Through Moses, God led them and provided manna and water to sustain them through their desert journey. And then Moses received 10 commandments on Mount Sinai. On one point, while on their, their way to the Promised Land, during this 40 years of wandering, the people complained of not having water, and God told Moses to speak to a specific rock, and he would send water. But Moses lost his temper with the people, and he struck this rock twice. Then Moses was told that he would not be allowed into the Promised Land. So after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, God allowed him to see into Canaan. Moses died and was buried by God. Wow, imagine someone coming to your high school reunion and telling this story. I was saved from death by being put in a basket and then floated on a river. Pharaoh's daughter plucked me out of the river and raised me in the palace. I killed someone. I was a shepherd. I saw a bush burn and it never burned up. The leaves stayed green. And then I heard God's voice. Honestly, I did. God told me what to do. I spoke and then plagues fell on a nation. I freed an entire race of people. I parted the water of a great sea. I asked God for food and it fell from heaven. I received commandments directly from God. I struck a rock and water poured from it. I saw a land impossible to see with the naked eye. I think I'll be buried by God. That's kind of unbelievable. And what would you say in return? Uh, I, I went to college? It's hard for me to imagine anything comparable, or in fact to imagine any one of those things happening in my life. That's probably why the chapter ends saying in verse 10, there has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Part of Moses' legacy is these defining moments he was special in God's eyes. He was asked to do hard things and he did them. God always provided a way for him and for the people of Israel. He provided a legacy of steadfast faith in God. And he demonstrated that God could continue to use him even when he faltered. Moses didn't always do things perfectly, did he? And that's also a part of his legacy. He made many mistakes. He killed a person. He was sometimes cowardly, sometimes angry, sometimes prideful, yet God used him and God still drew close to him. He had a unique relationship with God, one who saw him face to face, setting an example of faithfulness for those who would follow him. His life ends with a twist. He worked so hard all those years, yet missed the opportunity to enter the promised land. It's like people building a cathedral skilled stonemasons and woodworkers who never get to see their completed project. It seems tragic in so many ways. Tragic, that is, 
unless you see your life as an investment that outlives you. We don't know exactly what happened to Moses there in Moab, but we do know that his legacy echoes way beyond the promised land. He never got to set foot in it, but his legacy, his life, and his inspiration continues to lead others into promised lands of their own. Bruce Feiler, in his book, American Prophet, How the Story of Moses Shaped America, writes about how Moses' legacy became a narrative in the American story. Generations of Americans have been inspired by the story of Moses. The pilgrims quoted his story. Franklin and Jefferson proposed that he appear on the U.S. seal. Washington and Lincoln were called his incarnations, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. invoked him the night before his death. Presidents from both parties cited him for inspiration. For 400 years, Feiler says, one figure has inspired more Americans than any other, and his name is Moses. Each of us has individuals who have indelibly impacted our lives. Their legacy has shaped our life and mission, just as Joshua's was shaped by Moses's. Some of us have been encouraged by coaches or pastors, teachers or friends, parents who encourage us to call them mom or dad, even though they were our friends' parents, and youth leaders, like the ones that I had growing up, who invited us for pizza every Friday night in their homes, week after week. If, if we were lucky, we would have also had the opportunity to play those roles in the lives of people who follow us. The truth is that most of us didn't make it into the who's who. Our lives may not be the most biography worthy or <laughs> we probably won't turn up on the list of those where are they now sites after we're gone. But when we invest our lives as Moses did in being faithful in the present, despite our faults and our foibles, when we seek to know God, then we begin to create a future for others that will live long past us, even if our names are one day forgotten. Whatever happens to us, we know that what we do for God lasts way beyond us. We may never see our own self-proclaimed promised land, but the promise of the kingdom of God is that one day we'll get to see how everything and everyone turns out. Thank you.